I know this isn't the topic that I said it would be, but uh, honestly, I got kind of sidetracked with topics that I found much more interesting. If you truly, deeply want to understand how velocities work, I'll leave a description on the on the screen right now. So. Okay, we good? Okay. So, instead, we're going to edit some code. Uh, in order to get the most out of this, I recommend you download a couple of things. Ghidra, which is a reverse engineering tool. HXD, a hex editor. Swap Endian, I'll leave a link to that in the description, and Notepad++. Hey, Vsauce, Yoshin here. Um, I mentioned Notepad++ earlier in this vid, because I'm gonna be honest, I thought I would have to delve into, like, cheats and shit. Uh, turns out, no. Uh, this, this went way smoother than I anticipated, so... Yeah, you don't really need Notepad++ for anything in this, specifically. Uh, but hey! But hey, it's still pretty good to use. Um, you know, it has syntax highlighting and shit, so I would still recommend you get it. Just, no, for this, you don't need it. So if you if you really don't care, and you just want to edit the code and nothing else, I mean, you don't have to get it, you know. It's just, it's just a personal recommendation. Anyway, back to the thing. Now this is important. Um, first and foremost, what we need to know is what language the processor reads. See, what's actually happening is the machine code, well, the hexadecimal bytes, they're interpreted by the processor as instructions. So, like, move data into a register, move it into RAM, uh, logically shift left, like, shift, like, shit like that, right? It's the code of the game. Uh, it's processed by the processor uh, as stuff that it can use. So we see a bunch of bytes and hex, but the processor itself would see move word or whatever, right? Um, you can actually see this when the debugger was running. Uh, so first up, let's just let's just pick a random game from here to do this to. Uh, Vsav. Let's do Vsav. Why not? Not going to explain how to do the debug thing again. If you really need to know, it's in a previous episode. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to know what instruction we want to edit. For this, it's very simple. Uh, we can go to v sub xml. Okay. So, if you understand what we've been doing for the past couple of tutorials, we've been fucking around with the RAM, right? And this is a very big reason as to why that's useful. Um, so, what we're gonna do is we're going to find when time is set to, uh, to to when you're in a fight, right? So we'll just have this play. And then we'll write in here, watch point set the address of that. Just shut it up for a second. Uh, <laughs> one, which is the range, of course, as, as uh, we said before, comma W, which means write. But this is the really cool bit. Comma, watch point data, and then we can say a couple of conditions. We could say equals equals zero, which means if the value is set to zero, if anything in the code writes it to zero, we just stop execution. But we can also say exclamation point equals zero, which means not equals zero. So if we look in the debug window right quick, right, we see you know, test byte, you know, the instruction. But to the right is the raw hexadecimal value that we would get. Now, CPS2 and free games are encrypted, so you wouldn't see this exact value when you open up the program data. That's what xcopy is for. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna set that watch point. So now, whenever the game writes to this address in RAM, the processor will stop. Okay, here we go. Write and fight to FF8109. Have a look at that. F8109. You see that's 63. <laughs> yes, okay. So, 
We're trying to find the timer while we have the timer. Uh, this is just before, like, the graphics are updated. Like, literally, if I just run this. Yeah. So, we know FF8109 is the RAM address for the timer. And if we look at this, stopped at 1.1, writing byte to that address, PC equals 9230, and the data equals 63. So let's just quickly note this down. The PC equals 9230. We can just quickly go over here and say timer is set to RAM. When it says PC equals 9230, what it means is it's at this point that the program counter has reached that instruction. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch point clear. Going to go back. And then we're going to write BP set for that instruction specifically. Okay, it's reached that instruction. And if we look at the actual instructions that are being uh, parsed at the time, we see 922A. Notice it says move byte hash dollar sign 63 into 109A5. So A5 plus 109. That equals F of 8, 109. So we take the raw value of 63 and we write it into there. So the actual instruction that does that is 922A. It's important to uh, read up on uh, you know what assembly instructions do. Uh, for the CPS2, it is 68K, and for the CPS3, it is SH2, which I believe is the same as the Sega Saturn, interestingly enough. Uh, anyway, so, okay, this is cool. We know the instruction, but how does this really help us? Well, first, what we're going to do, because we're working with CPS2 specifically, we need to decrypt it first. And thankfully, due to xcopy, that's made incredibly simple. So we get vsev, and then depending on the offset of the instruction, we would have to decrypt different files. But since this is below 80,000, because it's just 922a, we can just have it be zero, which is uh, vm3e03d. So we take this, and then we find our program data, 3D, and we shoot it out somewhere. So for this, we'll say vsav decrypted 3. That's fine. Now, in order to make sure everything went as planned, what we're going to do is we're going to open what we just uh, created up. So, we have decrypted free, and we're going to go to that instruction. The reason is so we can have a look at the raw machine code that main would read 61, oh, no, 1B7C0063-0109. If we look at HXD, it's exactly that. So good, everything is processed, everything is fine, we're good. So, where does Ghidra come in? Seriously, this is the bit that's fucking magic. I'll include the VAT in the description. But what we can do is we can go over here and we can import a file into our current project. And now this is the important bit. What we're doing is we're opening it as a raw binary and then we have to parse it as a certain language. For this one, we're going to choose 68k default. Just put it in. And then we're going to double click it. This is going somewhere, I promise. It'll ask you uh, to analyze it since it hasn't been analyzed. Pick no. The reason specifically is because there are instances where there's raw data that the, the game will read that's unencrypted. 
uh, that the, the the game will use. So stuff like you know health values and you know velocity, shit like that. Um, so don't let it analyze because Ghidra doesn't make a distinction. You have to make the distinction, which is fine. So we press G, and then the value of our instruction, and we know how many bytes it takes up. One of nine. We select these by holding shift and arrow key, and then this is the cool bit. By pressing D, it'll parse these bytes as if the processor was reading it. And there you go. We can look at main, and we can see the, the instructions line up one to one. How cool is that? We can also right click this and say patch instruction. And now, we can write something else. We don't even need to have it be move byte. We can maybe make it move word or something else. We can do whatever the fuck we want. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll keep this simple. And we'll say, we'll change this to just 60. The hexadecimal equivalent of 60, at least. Which is, if I remember correctly, 3C. And if we press enter, there we go. We've just taken that instruction, and we've patched it to be something else. And, uh, Ghidra's really helpful with this kind of thing. Like, you can patch basically anywhere, and you can write instructions basically anywhere. Like, move, you know, byte, uh, fuck it, A0, into A1, or not. <laughs> I don't know why it would give me that option, if not. Yeah. You can write your own instructions, you can edit instructions, you can do a ton of shit, it's great. Um, but thankfully, this is fairly simple. We can just physically edit the value here. So we'll just say 3C, and then we'll save that. And if we go back to Xcopy, we can simply type onto encrypt, and it'll keep the same directories and all that. We don't need to do anything else. So it'll automatically shoot this back in. So now, if we run the game again, okay, there's an error, that's good, that implies we've done something. And look at that! The timer is 60 now instead of 99. This is one of the simplest code edits that you can do, but it really does go much further than that, should you desire it to. Uh, I believe I have Visa open in this already, so I don't really need this. but. Yeah, you can save it as that. Um, there's an extension for SH2. It's fairly simple to install additional extensions. Uh, but seriously, just look at this shit. You can go through basically fucking everything. It's fantastic. It's really good. You can even hover over a certain instruction and add comments to it like this to keep track of what specific registers are doing in this specific instance. You'll have to, you know, study up on assembly in order to really get the most out of this, but thankfully, most of what you would want to ROM hack is just simple, you know, move words or addresses or, you know, stuff like that, um, which is fairly simple to do in, in Ghidra and whatnot. So that's the basics of how you edit code for the CPS 2 and 3. Hope you found this interesting, and have a good day.